Our next caller is Lisa from Michigan. Hey, Lisa, how can we help you? Hey, everyone. How's it going? Good. Great. Just Good. okay. Yeah, I guess okay. For <laughs> Just <kidding>. We're great. <laughs> great. All right. So first of all, I know everyone says this, but I just got to say it too. Love your show. Listen to pretty much everyone for about a year now. Um, so my question has to do with leg training, lower body workouts. Um, I was introduced to heavy weight, la- heavy weight lifting probably about five or six years ago. Um, I was a runner, uh, long distances, and someone suggested that I work on building my posterior chain in order to um, get faster, actually. And showed me some exercises, did them, they worked, and I got faster. And I was hooked. So I ended up following various bodybuilding type programs over the years. And something that I have noticed is that my legs grow so fast and so easily. And as a female, I mean, it's not like I'm looking for a thigh gap or anything, (laughs) but I struggle to lose body fat in my thighs and then they grow really easily. So I'm looking for some guidance as far as, I mean, how do I change my lower body training? Um, I did purchase a few of your programs because they were on sale and I wanted to get a closer look at them. So I purchased multiple of them. Um, Right now, the way I train is I do a lower body, an upper body, and then more of like a full body Metcon. So like lower upper are very like heavy, traditional weightlifting. Um, and it looks like in your programming, there's multiple days of heavy legs, well, the various programs that I looked at. And it seems like whenever I've tried to do multiple days of heavy legs over the years, my legs grow. Now I, I do own a calipers and a flexible tape measure. So I know for a fact that like my body fat has stayed the same, but my muscle has gotten bigger. Like that's where the girth is coming from. I don't really feel like doing a ton of cardio (laughs) is the answer um, and leaving out all heavy weightlifting, but just kind of wondering if you could I don't know, tell me some modifications that I could make to your programs or if you have other ideas. Mm. Okay. I got lots of ideas. Yeah, that, so, was, that was a short-winded uh, uh, question. Yeah, so, <laughs> so here's a, here's the deal, Lisa. We got it, though. I feel like we got everything. No, I, yeah, this is actually quite you common. Still had me it's there. very common. Common. So here's what will happen if you follow a MAPS program. You'll wake up the next day with just way too much muscle. It's really powerful uh, and effective. <laughs> yep. no, that's not, I, I'm sure. <laughs> that's not, that's not going to happen. Okay, so a couple things. Number one, a, a question for you. Are you still doing any running? Yes. Um, I... Not the longer distances anymore. I do one day of like a sprint, basically. That's it. 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, 20 minutes, done. Okay, okay. And then I like to be able to keep myself in good enough running shape where I can go out and run three to five miles. So I do that maybe once a week. Okay, so okay, so that's not not too much, especially compared to what you were probably doing before. Now, right, what you, I was training for a twenty five k before. Got it. Okay, so what you're saying is quite common. First off, as a female, you're going to store more body fat in your lower body. Not much you can, and actually, actually, believe it or not, that's a good thing. They show that when women store body fat, uh, mostly in their lower body, they tend to be healthier. They tend to have higher omega three fatty acids in their body. They tend to have healthier children. So that's like, that's not a bad thing. It's a very normal natural good thing but i know i can i can hear your frustration right you want more balance in your body you want the upper and lower body to match a little bit in that case in that case i would say this look when you do your full body routines train your upper body first and leave your legs for the end of the workout that should make a difference and then number two reduce the volume of your lower body workouts you know a lot of people have uh one part of their body that tends to respond faster 
than other parts of the body. That's that's where the individualization comes mm -hmm. from when you when you change your routine, right? So if you're a guy and you're working out and your chest just grows real fast, but your arms don't seem to match, then you would put more focus on your arms, less on your chest. You can do this with your lower body as well. And you're not going to gain more body fat in your legs as a result. You don't, there's no such thing. Spot reduction is, is a myth. No. Your body burns body right. fat from you know wherever it wants. So I would do less volume. Right. Go ahead. I, I didn't say anything. Okay. <laughs> I would do more uh, more upper body work, less lower body work, save the lower body work for the end of your workout, and then use your, your calipers and your tape measure as a guide that points you in the right direction. And then I'll, I'll add to that. So I agree. Uh, and I think there's nothing wrong, too, with uh, adding a little bit more uh, endurance running. You know, in this case, like if you do that. Um, you definitely will lose more body fat. So you could run a little bit more. You could also uh, do like if there's a one of our programs where it calls for you to, you know, squat uh, twice in the week, you could exchange one of those out for like hip thrust instead or do something like lunges or step ups to a balance, maybe incorporate some stability training in there, or unilateral type of work instead of all the bilateral strength training. Like that'll help. Um, this was something I had, uh, I, I dated a girl that was a competitor. She had a very, that she was, her quads were so overdeveloped that we literally would, when we were getting ready for showtime, um, all she would do is lunges. That's all we did. We wouldn't allow her to do any squats or really, really heavy lifting. So you can definitely okay. modify the workout like that. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that says you have to bilateral heavy squat all the time. So if you see an extra, and if you do something like hip thrust instead of doing this on squat day, so follow our program, you see that it calls for, you know, you know, backloaded barbell squats. And you, instead, you go do hip thrusts yeah. instead, and then your butt yeah. will just get bigger. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You get you 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 build the butt, <laughs> you build the butt, but then you don't develop right. the the thighs and the quads as much. Right. Well, this so, is the conundrum we've always been in with even writing a program because you know there there's general attributes that we're we're trying to 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 put out there and, and hope that most people will respond. Too, but like in this case, like there are you know opportunities to to add these modifications, adjust things, you know, reduce some volume where you see where your growth is really rapid, and, and that's something too. I experienced this with a couple clients who you know their traps grew a little too uh, you know too pronounced, and so it's like it you know there's certain things individually that uh, you can modify and adjust and tweak, and so it's good to have communication, and that's why we also have a forum where a lot of this discussion happens. Also, keep in mind too that we don't <clears throat> or I wouldn't uh, recommend completely eliminating like leg stuff just because uh right. leaning for leaning out purposes that's a huge advantage for you right so you burn the most calories doing leg exercises most of our muscle is in our legs so that's going to speed your metabolism up by having muscular legs so if you were to completely eliminate leg stuff it, you would also have a harder time leaning out because of that mm -hmm. so it does work exactly. in our, it does and work that's where i was that's yeah. where i was feeling kind of stuck like right. i'm in like calorie deficit right now mm -hmm. and to lose a little body fat. And sure enough, my upper body's leaning out, my lower body's not, but yet I, I'm totally on board with like heavy compound lifting. I realize you know, that's, <laughs> that's probably the solution, but yet, you know, so should I more sort of discontinue or avoid the concept of progressive overload then? And then just, not necessarily, just, not necessarily, but like there's, I don't know if you've listened to the episode, but you should go listen to the episode that we did on uh, progressive overload. There's nine, I think we listed nine different ways to progressively overload. Progressive overload doesn't necessarily always right. mean adding more weight to the bar. Yeah, yeah. And you can just cut the volume down. You know, here's what, here's, okay. With someone like you, if you're very gifted in the leg department with muscle, and then you think to yourself, all right, I'm not going to go heavy anymore. I'm just going to do more reps. And then here's what will happen. You'll build more muscle as yeah. a result of doing that. So yeah. just cut the volume. That's yeah. it. Just cut the volume and okay. don't and don't prioritize your legs. When you do a full body workout, like we almost always, if we're, if we're writing a full body workout, the first exercises are lower body. They're the biggest movements, mm -hmm. most bang yeah. for most your buck. Taxing. I would save them for the end. When the you're done with, you, when you're yeah. done with all your yeah. upper body stuff, then you go do your legs. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks for calling yeah. in. Yeah. Thanks a lot, guys. No Have problem. a great day. 
Yeah, that's um uh, the longest question yet. Absolutely, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's the award. <laughs> you know, I tell you, this is this is where bodybuilding's got a lot. Of, one area in bodybuilding that's got a lot of value is that bodybuilders are excellent at understanding how to slow down development in some areas and speed up development right. in others. This, I love this client. Like, so I know I'm razzing her a little bit about the long winded question, but. This is actually really common. Um, you know, a lot of people that come in the gym and they they want to you know change their body composition. There's normally areas they're either very happy with or they develop really well, or areas they don't. And this is where I I like our job, and it's mm -hmm. and it's not as cookie cutter as oh go follow Maps Aesthetic, yes. yeah. you know, or oh go follow this program. I have to be able to modify and adjust, which is how we wrote these always. We've always never or we've never said. This is the perfect program for everybody. It's mm -hmm. you know here here's some general rules, but here's a great example of nothing. And, and what I love doing with a client like this, since almost everybody is is underdeveloped on the posterior chain, like I would get rid of a lot of the quad stuff and I'd focus more hamstring. Yeah, I would mm -hmm. do you know stiff legged deadlifts and more deadlift stuff. I would do more good morning type of stuff. I would do movements that because yeah, I've almost never I don't think I've ever had a female client say that their posterior chain was overdeveloped. Right, right. It was always quads. That, yeah. And that's why I went to the hip thrust area because normally it's it's normally their thighs, right? They're, they don't like that their thighs keep growing, getting bigger. But most girls are not are completely okay with adding an inch to their butt, you and know, their hamstrings. or their hamstring. Because here's the thing too, you develop those hamstrings, even if they grow in size, it gives this this great look on the backside. And, and it's just, it's the number one overlooked muscle yeah. on both men and women. This is just the perfect example that, you know, like once we get so divided in these camps, like, oh, well, I'm just going to power lift. I'm just going to CrossFit. Like, there's so many individual differences to, to account for. That's Bodybuilding right. is a great option to really mm -hmm. sculpt the body. So, it's, you know, it's a valid method, you know, and all of these can work and we can interweave them together.